why do planets fail to give results planets fail to give results huh? uh, do they or do they not do they always give results or do they not mm, how can a planet fail does it mean astrology doesn't work or is it our wrong analysis so here are six reasons because of which we think that planets fail to give results but actually they don't fail so when you see all of these you will actually know what i'm talking about all right so if you're new then please subscribe and if you enjoy this video please hit the thumbs up and comment below what do you think on all the six factors let me see who can comment on all the six all right and for personalized horoscope consultations please go to my website down in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him <laughs> <laughs> so what is the first reason why a planet apparently fails to give results the first reason is we do not look at the bhava chart what is the bhava chart so we have the lagna chart which is known as the ascendant chart or the chart of the rising sign which means whenever we are born whichever sign is rising in the eastern horizon that is our lagna our first house and that is known as the lagna chart as you know but the lagna chart only tells which sign a particular planet is so for example if you are if you are a cancer ascendant and jupiter is in your uh, is in cancer and if you have a ascendant in cancer so you will have jupiter you will have number 4 in the first house which apparently can seem as if jupiter uh, is also in the first house but the bhava chart actually is calculated through various mechanisms uh, by calculating the degrees bhava madhya and all this you know by which they get to know which house a planet is placed so for example if you are a cancer lagna and jupiter is in cancer when you are born then it can happen that jupiter is actually in cancer for sure but he is not in your first house he could be in your 12th house for example okay but what we do we see oh jupiter is in the lagna how can it give me bad things right but uh, maybe it's in the 12th house okay so similarly this always happens with the 7th and the 6th house a planet in the 7th house always is favorable for marriage but in the bhava chart it can be uh, actually in the 6th house so for example if a cancer lagna person has uh, for cancer uh, capricorn is the seventh house right so if you have uh, mars in capricorn for example or let's say you have moon in capricorn but it does not mean that it is in the seventh house it can be in the sixth house also so i have a very important video on the bhava chart please go and type in youtube exotic astrology bhava chart you will find the details all right so please see the house that a planet is in the bhava chart not in the lagna chart all right and then you will know which houses uh, or which house will the planet uh, indicate in the dashas okay now number two is equally very critical number two is you only see the power chart <laughs> and you don't see the lagna chart which means you saw oh yeah 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 uh, jupiter is in this house in the power chart fine very good great but the lagna chart tells you the sign and the sign tells you the dignity okay so planets give good results if they are placed in good houses for that particular event of life number one and if they are placed in a own sign multricone exaltation or at best fr friendly sign and if they are in um, debilitation sign or enemy sign they may not give that great results okay so so for example a planet in sixth house is it good or bad it's bad for marriage it's good for your profession okay and you also need to check the dignity the dignity the sign will tell you the awareness so if a planet is in a good house but in a bad dignity so suppose you have an exalted planet in the seventh house in the bhava chart what does it mean it means oh sorry if you have a debilitated planet okay in the seventh house so the planet in the seventh house will protect the marriage but because it is in debility uh, there is no awareness about how to protect okay so it's like the marriage is intact but the quality is not there the sign will show the quality okay so therefore please first check the bhava chart that will tell you what event of life will that planet support okay sixth house job seventh house profession but what will be the quality that will be from the lagna chart okay so do not forget the lagna chart number three this is classic you do not see the navamsha chart the d9 chart okay 
The D9 chart is like a magnification of your ninth house. As, I, as I've said in my recent videos, imagine every planet in your chart is sitting in the ninth house. How will it be? So therefore, the D9 chart actually tells you the karma that you carry from your previous lifetimes, which means it also tells you your traits, talents, hobbies, interests, and your passions and your inclinations. Very, very, very important inclinations which you carry in this life. Okay, so therefore, if a planet is well placed in the D9, uh, then it means externally when the dasha of that planet starts, you will get some good news related to that house. Okay, so for example, if your 10th lord is well placed or if you have a good planet, a great planet in the 10th house, when that dasha gets activated, then you may get some promotion or some new job opportunity it can come. But if that planet is badly placed in the D9, then what happens is, Inherently, you don't, you you have no knowledge about that area. So you, you need to start from scratch. So that makes things a bit more difficult or considerably difficult rather. Okay. So therefore, a good planet in the D1 can help you bring opportunities. But a good planet in the D9 along with the D1 can help you sustain them. Okay. So character is seen from the D9. Okay. And outward personality is seen from the D1. So that's very important. So do not miss the D9. All right. What is the next factor? Number four is classic. You ignore aspects, conjunctions, and afflictions. Okay. So what is aspect? Aspect means a planet is aspecting a particular house or a particular planet. Then conjunction is two planets, three planets, four planets, five planets are sitting together. Okay. And afflictions means uh, when uh, natural malefics or functional malefics are aspecting a house or conjunct and they are kind of uh, giving uh, issues, problems related to a particular planet or a house. So that kind of modifies. So for example, if you have an exalted planet in the seventh house, in the bhava chart, so in the bhava chart, it, the planet is in seventh and in lagna chart, the planet is in uh, good dignity. But the planet is afflicted by Saturn, for example. So then what happens is you have good awareness. It will protect your marriage. You will do whatever is required to protect your marriage. But because of Saturn's aspect, there is some obstruction coming in. So it's like saying, you know what to do, but because of some reason, externally, people are not letting you do what to do, okay, well, what you should do. Okay, so therefore, that can make things a bit difficult. And you can claim that, oh, what's the use of this exalted planet in this house, that house? What's the use of this planet in this house, uh, which is in Multhricon? It's not giving me any results. Okay, uh, so you will keep googling, you will search astrology videos, you will type in comments. This is there. Why is this not happening? That not happening. So maybe that planet is afflicted. So you need to check that. Okay. Similarly, a planet which is conjunct Saturn will also give afflictions. Okay. So therefore, you you really need to understand what is going on. Okay. Through aspects and conjunctions, and affliction is basically either a malefic or uh, aspecting or conjunct. So it's the same thing, basically. Now, number six, very, uh, this is uh, number five, sorry, number five, very, very, very critical, okay? This is the root cause of all problems, I'll tell you. You do not look at the dashas, okay? So I always get this question. People ask me, oh, they have three great planets and why is their life so miserable? Why is my life so bad if I have three great planets in the 10th house or three great exalted planets, okay? Three Mahapurush Yoga giving planets, okay? Why is my life so terrible, okay? Does astrology really work? Well, the answer is you have those planets, but somehow, unfortunately, by your destiny, you do not get the Mahadashas of those planets, okay? So, for a planet to be activated in a proper way, you need to get the Mahadasha of that planet. You can also get it in Antardashas, but Antardashas are very small, okay? So, for example, if you have a great planet in 10th house, like Venus, for example, Venus in great dignity. So, you may get Venus Antardasha, okay? But Venus Antardasha will be how much? You know, maybe one year, two year, three year, three, three and a half years at max, okay? So, then you 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 will claim, oh, I have Venus, you know, uh, why, why did this not happen, that not happen. So therefore, you need good dashas and you also need that dasha coming in a particular age. So suppose you have three great planets, uh, Sun, Moon, Mars, back to back, very great planets. And Sun dasha comes when you are 85 years old. 
<laughs> so what will happen of course it can happen nowadays people are living for 100 years hopefully or more but uh, if that would have come when you were 25 or 30 that would have been a completely different story right similarly if you have a great Saturn and your Saturn Mahadasha comes when you are a great for career, I mean, okay, so when you are uh, like five years old, so what happens? By the time you are 24, you are out of Saturn Dasha. So nothing significant happens in your profession. At best, you can be school captain or some, you know, local leader in your class or somebody like that, okay? that That is all it does. But if it came at the age of, you know, 25, then till 44, you would have a fantastic career, okay? So therefore... You ignore dashas and deshkal patra. Do not do it. Please check the dashas and only come to conclusions. And the last but not the least, you do not check transits. Okay, transits are very. Our transits are also very important because they <clears throat> tell you how and when the dashas will kind of fructify. So, just if I, I I get this all the time. People say, "Oh, I have this dasha. When will this get activated?" So, for example, if you have uh, Venus Mahadasha and Venus is very good. So when Venus Venus Antar Dasha starts, which is the first Antar Dasha, then when prominent planets during those three three and a half years of Venus Venus will transit either the second house, sixth house, tenth house, or eleventh house, that time you will get good results. Okay. So therefore, transits are like the cherry on the top. You need to. You know, use transits after using all this, but don't go the other way around. Okay, don't say, <clears throat> okay, um, uh, I, I have the Jupiter transiting my 10th house. Why am I not becoming a millionaire in one year? Okay, so inherently the potential has to be there in the chart. Only then does it make sense to see transits and all this. All right. So thank you very much. Please comment below. What do you think about these factors and some other factors which, uh, because of which people say, oh, they don't get results. All right. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And if you're new, please subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up and comment below. And for consultations, you can always go to my website down in the description section. Thank you so much.